Welcome, everybody. I'm super excited for another episode of Showbot Science. This is your host, Nate. And today, we are going to meet three amazing kid geniuses. It's going to be an awesome episode, and it's going to be very inspiring, so don't miss a thing. Let's get this episode started and meet our first guest. Up first is an awesome inventor. This is Allie Weber, Kid Inventor, and I'm here today to show you my award-winning invention, the Frost Stopper. Allie Weber is also the amazing host of Technic Alley Speaking on YouTube. And she was a finalist at the 3M Young Scientist Challenge for one of her inventions. So the first thing I wanted to ask Allie is how could kids become a great inventor like her? Well, it's really easy, actually. Um, I think the problem that most kids come across when figuring out something to invent is they can't think of a problem to solve in order to invent something to fix that problem. And it's really easy because all you have to do is think about something that you don't like doing, like doing the dishes or something. And then you can invent something in order to make that easier or fix that problem. What if you just want to invent a specific thing, but you don't know what that specific thing is. How do you find what that specific thing is? Well, sometimes you have to be really creative and think about all the different things that you can do with the things at your house. For example, like if you have a piece of wood, then it could be like a wheel or something. And um, you can end up just putting it together to solve the problem that you have, just with the random things that you have. Or if you have a problem but you don't really know what the problem is that you want to solve, then you can always ask your friends for advice or think about problems that you have in your daily life all the time that you hate doing or stuff like that. And then you can figure out how to fix them. So say you know what the problem is and you know what you want to invent, but you just don't know how to invent it. Okay, so that one's a bit trickier. For that one, you might need to do a little bit of practice with making other things. I have been making stuff since I was like six years old, so I have a lot of making experience, but for some people, it's really hard to get started. There's a lot of resources online that you can look for when making things, but also don't be afraid to ask other people for advice. And then that way you can use their ideas and combine them with your ideas to make something completely new. And that's like super cool. Okay, so what if you know the things that you want to invent, but you just are missing one material? Okay, so for that one, sometimes you have to experiment with some things you have and try to combine some of the other things you have to try to make that one material that you want if you don't have it. Like, let's say you wanted a piece of metal that was, like, flat, and you wanted it as the roof of something. So instead of using that piece of metal, since you don't have it, you could use cardboard or a different kind of metal that's cheaper or something like that. So look for sort of the same thing that would work, and then try to put it together with something else maybe to see if that will work in the place of that. Also, you can, um, when you're starting, you always want to look to what others have done in the past to fix that problem in order to know how to solve your problem and make that better. So you always want to do your research before you start. You're giving me a lot of ideas. <laughs> cool. So what if you want to create it mm -hmm. and you know what it is? and you have all the materials, but you don't know what you should name it. Okay, so for that, I usually think of stuff that rhymes or if there's a pun or something. Like, one of my inventions is a temperature-sensing glove that will sense when you're about to get frostbite, so you can go inside and warm up before you get frostbite. 
And it took me forever to come up with the name because I didn't know what to do it. I was like cold gloves or cold guard or something. And then I finally came up with the frost stoppers because it sounds super cool. And it also tells you sort of what the product does. So that's what I would say. Have something that sounds really cool, but it also gives you a sneak peek to what it does. If kids want to learn more about being an inventor, where can they go? Um, I have a Twitter page that's Robot Maker Girl. You can follow me on Twitter. And I also have a YouTube channel called Technic Alley Speaking, and it has a bunch of my videos about my inventions and some tech toy reviews and stuff like that. And it's super cool. you got to check it out. Our next guest was being bullied. And for everyone who is being made fun of, this story is yours. So keep this in your heart and never give up. Please meet Sophia. And let me tell you about the story of Sophia. She's named Sophia Spencer, eight-year-old girl with an incredible passion for insects. And when she started getting bullied for her unique mm. hobby, she was ready to give it all up. So her mom writes an email to the Entomological Society of Canada asking for someone to help. That's where Morgan Jackson steps in. Scientist Morgan Jackson runs social media for the Entomological Society. And when he saw the letter, he posted it on Twitter and it went viral. That's when the hashtag bugs are for girls was created. A year later, the two published a scientific paper together. In the paper, Sophia wrote, it felt good to have so many people support me. And it was cool to see other girls and grown-ups studying bugs. It made me feel like I could do it too. And I definitely, definitely, definitely want to study bugs when I grow up. Probably grasshoppers. So, Sophia, I know that you've been collecting bugs and you often were made fun of at school. So tell me how you made them stop making fun of you. Well, how I made them stop making fun of me is I just showed them my passion for bugs. I didn't hold back and I just showed them how much I love bugs. And after uh, this fool kid came up to me and she was like, Sophia, I, I really kind of like bugs. Can you tell me about one? And then that kid told his friends and then nobody bullied me anymore. Wow, that's a good story. So could you tell me about your research paper on bugs? Morgan, the scientists that helped me owed it, we would just keep scraping together. And by the end of last year, we uh, finished the research paper and we sent it out. So why do you like bugs so much? Well, I like bugs because bugs are just so fascinating, and I really think that any bug can look cute. I think the grossest bugs, like bugs that other people wouldn't like, I love and think are adorable. Like right now, I've, I'm looking at six snails that my mom lets me keep in my house. I'm happy that you love bugs because I do too. So... Could you tell me what your favorite kind of bug is? Well, my favorite kind of bug is a grasshopper. Grasshoppers and snails are my two favorite bugs. I love them. They are just so fascinating and so pretty. My favorite bug is a roly-poly. Yeah, I like roly-polies too. I like them. So, you know that you're doing amazing work, right? Yep, I do, and I'm proud of it. Thank you for being on the show. You're welcome. Up next is a fellow kid podcaster who I got to meet at the Shedd Aquarium in Chicago. Hi, everybody. I'm Liv Van Leggie, also known as Liv Bet. And I make videos for teachers and kids called LibBets, where I talk about reading, thinking, and life. And I also have a podcast called The Kidlet Show on Pinna. Liv wants to be an ichthyologist when she grows up, a scientist who studies sharks. 
So I was wondering how she got interested in sharks. I got interested in sharks around second grade when my teacher said you could read any book that you want about any animal, and the only book that was left was one about sharks. And I said, "Hmm, I wonder if they would be interesting." And you know what happened next? I fell in love with sharks. <laughs> could you tell me a little bit about the girls' club? So the girls' club is a shark club for girls. So like girls can be like inspired by girl shark scientists who work in the field. And I actually just got to do my first shark dissection with them. I got to hold the eyeball and see the brain. Okay. <laughs> so, how did you get involved with the girls' club? Actually, it's kind of a not that interesting story. I was sitting on my couch one day, and my dad, I'm like, Dad, are there any like clubs for really cool shark things? And he's like looking it up, and he finds, Hey, there's the girls' club. It's it's about girls and science. And I'm like, What? So really, I got involved with the Gills Club by just wonder and thought, just thinking, "Hmm, I want to get girls involved in science. How can I do that?" And the first time I actually really got to be with the Gills Club was I went to the Shark Center in Cape Cod in Chatham, and I actually met some of the people in the Gills Club, and I thought that that was pretty amazing. So the Chatham Shark Center is one of my favorite places. How many people are in the Gills Club? Probably hundreds. There are a lot of people in the girls' club, and most of them I don't even know. It's a very, very, very big club. It's of girls all over the country working together to save sharks. So, could you tell me about Team Genie? So, Team Genie is a project that me and my author friend Heather Lang, author of Swimming with Sharks, started in honor of Eugenie Clark. She was an amazing girl shark scientist who made a big difference in the world of shark research. And Team Genie is basically a club where we're activists, like to help save sharks. So it's our little Save the Sharks club. So could you tell me about your new podcast, The Kidlet Show, which is also on Pinna? Yeah. So my new podcast called The Kidlet Show. So I interview authors about their books, and so far I've had about seven episodes come out, and I'm really excited because I think all of them sounded awesome, and I feel really proud. And I've interviewed some of my like author idols, including Kate DiCamillo. Yeah, Mercy Watson, one of her new books, those ones. We have a lot of those at school, and we've been reading a lot of them. Wow, she's just. Butter toast, hot butter toast. <laughs> Pig D, hot butter toast, cute, just plain cute. <laughs> yes, it is. So you also make videos that you call live bits, and they're about reading and thinking and life, and also sometimes about sharks. Yes, quite a lot actually. I love to talk about my passions, and my live bits and sharks are one of my passions. So, if people want to find out more about your work or your live bits or the Kidlet Show, how can they find that? So, to find out more about my work, I have a website. It's called SeeLiveBits dot com, and from there you can actually get to all of my places where I have content. So, from my website, you can get to my blog, my Vimeo, which has most of my live bit videos, my Instagram, and my Twitter. So I would say you would probably want to go to thelibbits dot com to find all of my stuff. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you for letting me be on the show. This was so much fun. There you have it, folks. The show about science is complete. Dad, you can shut the recording off. But first, music on today's episode was produced by the inscrutable Breakmaster Cylinder. And our theme music was produced by Jeff and Teresa Brooks. Dad, you can shut the recording off. For the newest episodes of the show about science, download the Pin app or go to pinna.fm/promo.